All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ask the Pediatrician Live. Uh, welcome, welcome. Just checking my charger is plugged in. One minute. All right, welcome to ATP Life Monday. Uh, this is a program brought to you by Ask the Pediatricians Foundation. Uh, you have 60 minutes to ask any questions on any health issues affecting children, and I will try my best to answer them in 60 minutes. So welcome everyone. Uh, please share, help us to share the video. Um, whichever platform um, you're watching from. So um, invite your friends, family, wherever you're allowed to share the video to, please do. And I'm also just going to do the same to make sure that people can all see me and hear me. So let me know you're there, send a message, drop a comment. If you're watching on Instagram, YouTube or Ask the Pediatrician Facebook book, uh, Facebook group or Ask the Pediatrician Facebook page. Uh, we are there already. You can just drop your questions straight away or your comments and then I'll be able to see them. Uh, but if you're watching on our other groups like Ask ATP Family or ATP Still a Mom, you will have to click on the video itself and then drop your question directly under the video. If you drop it under the post that you share to the group, I may not be able to see your comments straight away. So help us with that. So let's just share the video in the next two minutes and then we can all start to take our questions. Remember, we just have one hour. So, uh, Please share the video. And if you are watching a rebroadcast, some of us will come to watch it after the live session has ended, which is usually at 7 p.m. Nigerian time. If it has ended, please do not just drop comments under that video because I will not be there live to say it. What you can do is to watch the video and see whether we actually answer your question or not. And if we didn't, you can... Um, you can go to our Facebook group, Ask the Pediatrician Facebook group, and you can post your questions there, and we'll be able to answer you much later on. So thank you so much for those of you who are watching on Instagram, and I think I've also just shared the video, and we can start taking our questions. Also, just to make sure it is pinned to all the appropriate uh, pages, so... You're welcome, everyone. I hope your Monday has been good. Mine has been busy. Always a busy Monday for me, but it's okay. Um, so that's why we're here. So please drop your questions uh, and we'll try and answer them in the next one hour that we have. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time for you to be here today. So I can see some of you watching on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so please start to drop your questions. The earlier, the better. As you're dropping them, I'm just using the opportunity to pin the video so that people can see. And just let me know you can hear me clearly as well. But I think, yeah, I think I've done with all the sharing and all the different pages. I guess everybody's 
see me and everybody can hear me now. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone on Instagram, on Facebook. You're all welcome to Ask the Pediatrician Live. Uh, program brought to you by Ask the Pediatrician Foundation. Ask the Pediatrician Foundation is committed to the health and the welfare of our children. And we do that through our online uh, platforms as well as our offline community medical outreaches. We just did our Children's Day outreaches in many parts of the country, Nigeria, and some states are actually still doing their outreaches as well. And we actually did the online outreach uh, as well. Over so around 450 people registered and we were able to reach majority of them. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us this evening. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop your questions now and we will try and answer them. And also on Thursday, you can listen to our ATP hour where we actually discuss important topics that have to do with health of our children. And I think last week I started a series on first aid treatment for children because many of us, we always have things that happen at home and at home parents were the number one uh, caregiver for our children. So we need to know what to do if your child is having fever, what do you do? If your child is having like cough or something, what do you do? If your child is convulsing. So I'm going to continue that series this Thursday. So if you have not listened to the part one, I will encourage you to go and listen to the part one. You can listen to it on this same platform you're listening now, except for Instagram. But it's available on Facebook page, Facebook group. More importantly, you can listen to it on the podcast, Ask Dr. Baby ATP Podcast. That is where you can find all my teachings in one place. You can watch, you can listen. And so you, you can do that. Then next week, Thursday, I'll be doing the second part of the first aid care at home. And like I said in that video, in that last broadcast, I encourage all parents to be training first aid you know they are available online for free it's good to know first aid basic first aid care so that if anything happens you know what to do before you come to us at the hospital so i will encourage you to be part of that series all right thank you so much and you can also watch all our past episodes and listen to all the past teachings on our uh, facebook page facebook uh youtube channel we're also on tiktok so we always uh and we're also on instagram please follow us so we're on twitter we're on all the social media platforms follow us to learn a lot about the health of your children and if you have any questions you can always go to our ask the pediatrician facebook group and you can post your questions there and we'll be happy to answer them all right, so I think I start seeing some questions coming through. No question on Instagram. If you have questions, please ask your questions. Good evening. Uh like Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I have the first question from Guchuku Vera. Um, my baby clocked two years on May 16. She actually, I guess you meant she actually asked her control, has three months very active but cannot walk unsupported yet. She can bottom shift. Uh, we first still ask you to see a neurologist, MRI, EG, fashion, blah, blah, blah. She walks holding things around. We should still walk. She was placed on Bacon Beyond only and check up. Okay, so if uh, some children do not walk um, on time, especially if they are bottom shuffling. If so, if I have seen your child, I would not have done all the MRI, EEG. I just felt it's a waste of resources. We all know that if a child is bottom shuffling, they may not walk until they're about 23 months. So sometimes it's good, they could walk late. It does not mean anything is wrong with them. Unless there are other health issues, which you may have told the neurologist, which is not in this uh, right. -up. But if it's just because your child is not walking, but your child is bottom shuffling and there's no other issues, then it's just a matter of time. Because sometimes some children are very fast with their bottom shuffling, so they don't want to stand up and walk. So that's why there's nothing wrong with them. And eventually they will walk. So there's, I just think you just watch for now and give us some time. 
you already seen the neurologist, you can always go for a checkup later on. Yeah, so nothing to worry about. Good evening, good check Uh Flora and Sadi for large. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us and watching us. We appreciate. All right. Thank you so much. I don't think I have any questions on Instagram yet. Okay, nice. No question on Instagram. Okay, I'll go check and say thank you. Um so much work. Okay, you're welcome. Just remember that if you are not able to ask your questions on live, you can always ask your questions later on our Facebook group. We are there 24-6, not 24-7 because we don't do any question and answer on Sundays, but we're there Mondays to Fridays. So you can always ask any questions that you have on Mondays to Saturdays on our Facebook group and we will answer them. We have a lot of committed moderators, professionals, and they'll be there to answer your questions. All right, so Nadi, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so I don't have any questions today. People are still joining, no problem. We will keep on chit chatting before we have more questions. Okay, it seems like I have a question here. Uh, Tinua, they say, I would love to ask you the Prince of Mukos. Mukos where? When you say Prince of Mukos, where? So you have to be very more specific with where the Mukos is so that we know in a teaching four months. And what do you mean by in a teaching four months? So let me just quickly say that when you want to ask a question to the pediatricians, we like things to be very simple. Start with the age of your child. Tell us what it is you see. And when you mention symptoms, tell us where. Don't just say this. Or that people always ask, for example, discharge. And I'm like, where is it discharge? Because you can have the child from the eyes, you can have from the nose, you can have from the mouth, you can have from the vagina, and you can have from the urethra. So there are many places things can come from. So when you don't specify, we will not be we'll be confused. So always say what exactly the symptom is, which part of the body it is, and what your question is exactly, then we can answer that. So this question is incomplete and I'm unable to answer it. All right, the next question, say good evening, Ma. I would like to ask, my baby of four weeks didn't pull for six days and my mother-in-law did purging for her. How? What do you mean your mother-in-law did purging for her? But let me just stop there and quickly answer it and say, please, nobody should do any purging for a child, please. Okay, just leave the baby alone. A four weeks old baby, if your baby is on exclusive breastfeeding, they will not pass through every day. And that is perfectly normal. You don't need to give the child anything. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to insert anything there. You know, some of you will go and be putting cutting board, metallism. That thing is a very painful thing. Please don't. Just leave the baby alone, okay? So they may not pass two for days and even up to two weeks, but when eventually they pass this two, it will be normal too. And that is perfectly normal. That is not constipation. There's nothing wrong with the baby. So just keep breastfeeding your baby only. And please avoid people using our babies as guinea pigs to try all sorts of... Please always ask us first before you start doing anything uh, because sometimes in terms of trying to help, people actually cause more problems because I don't really know what your mother-in-law did to this baby now. So just leave the baby alone. There's nothing wrong with the baby not passing through. They don't have to pass through every day and they can go up to two weeks without passing through. As long as the baby is still sucking, their tummy is not distended, they're not vomiting, the baby is otherwise well, just leave the baby alone. You don't need to do anything. All right. And then your next second question is that the left leg of your baby is not straight. So for that, I really need to see a picture. So I will, if you're on our Facebook group, yeah, you're on a Facebook group, you're a Facebook user, so I know you're on a Facebook group. So take a picture of that leg. And please, when you don't take a picture of a leg, uh -huh, you must take the full picture of the baby. And you must show the second leg. Don't just say this is the left leg. So when doctors want to look at things, we want to compare. 
So we want to look at the one that you say is straight. We want to compare it to the one you say is not straight. And don't just take only the hanku or the feet. You have to take the old baby. If you are the type of people or person that doesn't like your baby's picture on social media, that is perfectly fine. You have to go to see a doctor face to face so that they can look at the baby and then compare the baby sitting lying down and look at the legs properly. So I believe your baby was born in the hospital. A doctor should have examined your baby. Your baby is going to go for six weeks immunization. That's another opportunity for you to see a doctor. So ask them, even if it's a nurse, ask them first. Help me to look at my baby's leg. Is it not is straight? Is it not straight? So if it's a nurse, the nurse will send you to the doctor. If it's a doctor, they will look at it. So either the legs are fine. They will tell you not to worry. They are not fine. Then they will let you know who is to see, whether a pediatrician, orthopedic surgeon, whoever needs to see then they will advise you appropriately. But that, that reminds me to also kind of create, because we get a lot of questions like this, and I'm wondering, where was this baby born? Did no doctor see this baby? Because I don't like it when mothers are the first person telling us there's something wrong, there's something wrong there. It's really for something that we expect maybe was born with. So please, it's important that all newborn babies are examined at the hospital before you leave. Some of you go to deliver with midwives, churches, and all that. But please, you still need to take your baby to the hospital. A doctor needs to examine your baby from head to toe. They, because some things are wrong at birth. Some babies are born with some abnormalities. Some of those abnormalities are so critical that they have to be fixed within 24 hours. Some of them are so critical, we have to fix them within the first week or month of life. So that is why every baby... No matter where you deliver your baby, must be examined by a doctor. And that doctor should be able to tell you, have examined your baby, everything is fine. They calm the finger, they calm the toes, we, we check everything. It is important to do that. So please, let's always check. And if for any reason, maybe a doctor didn't see it, you get home, you see it, then you need to also tell us um, what it is and all that. Okay. So, Tinoade, okay, you are the one asking a question about mucus. So, you're asking about mucus that is in the pool. You didn't even say where it is. How do you, how will I even ever think of a pool? I always think mucus, I maybe think of the nose or cat or something. You say, why is it important that you always write a full question? And that's why I always do make assumption on this on this platform. I always say, I won't assume because people are always, I'm always going to assume wrongly. All right, so number one, teaching is a normal thing. Teaching does not make your child to have any watery stool or diarrhea or anything, okay? So there's nothing like teaching and poo and stool. Don't even bring that connection at all. Your baby teaching means the baby is bringing out teeth, and that is it. There's nothing else that comes with it. So some babies may bite a little bit more. They may scratch their gum. They may drink a little bit of saliva and all that. They may be biting people more, biting on the breast or the nipple more. Those are signs you may see. But otherwise, there's really no other symptoms for teaching. Teaching is so maybe just you just wake up, you see the teeth. So it doesn't. It's not something that should make a child to have any other symptoms like fever one tree, diarrhea, or uh, stools, or anything. So if you notice anything, please and please do not link it to teaching because that is the number one, uh, will I call it, okay, I, I don't want the mother to get offended, but I will say that's actually the number one sin that most Nigerian mothers commit, according to the pediatrician's textbook, because pediatrician, every little thing, oh, it's teaching, it's teaching, it's teaching, no, please, everything is not teaching. And teaching is just something that's an innocent bystander that is happening on his own, but he's being blamed. Just like people blame the devil for every little uh, thing they did wrong. You know, it is not sitting. So if your child has any unusual sense, what you see in your baby's tool is a reflection of so many things, a reflection of what are you feeding the baby with, what food is your baby on, are you giving drugs? There are so many things. So we need to ask you all those questions first, So, but don't even blame it on sitting it's not normal for a baby to have watery stool or anything like that so the mucus is a reflection of what the things so you'll be on medication you'll be on formula you'll be on what are even yourself since you are eating yourself may be going into the baby's food so 
those, those are the questions we need to ask you first. So ask that separately, but let's focus separately from the sitting part. All right, let's go to Igo Chuko said, my three weeks always bring out food from the nose and mouth. That is what we call reflux. Um, her nodding for 30 minutes. Yeah, that is fine. Just keep doing that. Most babies have reflux. It will stop on its own. All right. But Choco, are you the only one that is coming here today? Okay. <laughs> you're asking so many questions. It's fine. Don't worry. Go ahead. I'm just checking. My baby also, yes, the only issue she has is hearing loss, or which is on hearing here. Okay. So if your child has hearing loss, okay, that's why it's always good to have complete questions. See, we don't just want to judge. And yeah. So if your child has hearing loss, it's not a, it's not a standalone. So if a child who has hearing loss is also slow walking, then it's, it's different from a child who doesn't have any other issue with slow walking. So there are many issues going on because the first question we need to ask is why is your child also having hearing loss? So the, because the, what is causing the hearing loss may be linked to what is causing the delay in walking. They may all be linked together. There may be other issues that you have not even mentioned to me as well that may be linked together. So I now understand why your neurologist has to do all the other tests they did. So it's not just because the child is not walking. But this is a child who is not working. This is a child who has got hearing loss. So there are multiple issues going on with your baby. So it's good to um, continue to follow up with your pediatrician. The question is, why is your child having hearing loss? So if you have that conversation, you know, this is like a full consultation kind of a thing. But the good news is that you're already seeing a specialist for that. So they will be able to uh, advise you for that. But there can be a link between your child not working and your child not hearing because everything happens in the brain the hearing the walking it all happens in the brain so there may be a connection and the question is what is that connection and that is what your neurologist is looking for by doing the scans and all those stuff all right okay so now this sorry yeah i've answered your question now i, I want to know if parents of mucosy i have already answered that question because i've told you it's dependent on so many other things how are you feeding your baby? Are you giving your baby drugs? Are you giving your baby formula? Are you giving? There are many things. So mucus is something produced by the intestine. So um, some instances can make baby to produce more mucus than the other. So there's something wrong with a little bit of mucus being this too. But if your baby is not passing, maybe frankly, only mucus and maybe with even with blood or something, then that's a different ball game ball together. Then that is when we are going to be worried then. But we also need to make sure that you are not doing the wrong thing that could be making your baby to be having mucus in the stool. So for your four months old baby, we expect you to give baby only breast milk. No food, no drugs, nothing else. And so if you are doing that, we don't expect babies to be having like a lot of mucus in the stool and all that. A little bit of mucus can be there once in a while, but not like Baby is passing only because, like some children do that. For example, children who are going to have uh, intussusception and it may be brownish, there may be blood in it, and all that. So that's why we, those kind of questions cannot be answered in isolation. We need to know all the other things you're doing that can explain the mucus in the stool. So that's it. All right, I like being road, do Okay, uh, maybe it's five months, two weeks. Her breathing is noisy, and I took her to the hospital. Good, test was done on her, which was needed for infection. Good, however, nebulization was done on her, but the breathing is noisy, and she's also coughing. So, what is your question? You've not asked any question, I like being road. You've only told me what has happened to your baby, and because you've been to the hospital. So, if you have been to the hospital, my assumption is that a colleague of mine has spoken to you and told you what is wrong and why they are nebulizing your baby. So whenever you, you give ask this kind of question, number one, you have to ask me a question because I don't know what you have been told or what you know. So I need to know what exactly is your concern. That is number one. I'm saying that generally because people do that a lot. People will just tell me stories about their children's health and then leave it hanging for me to decide what to say. And I'd always, I'm always like, I don't know what to say <laughs> because you need to ask me a very specific question, especially if you have been to the hospital. So I don't, I, I can only assume that your child has what we call bronchiolitis because that is the commonest thing that will make them to be nebulizing your child as a five month old, especially because you said babies 
uh, it's otherwise well. So the child doesn't have like pneumonia or anything. So children can have what we call bronchitis. It's a viral infection. It, they, it, they, it makes children behave like they have asthma. So they have noisy breathing. They can have difficulty with breathing, but it's just virus. Uh, it's just a viral infection. It's not something um it's not something major and uh, most of them what we just do is what we call symptomatic treatment it's just to make the child breathe better so that's why they're nebulizing your child and most of those kind of viral infections they run their course in other words they are going to take their time most of them will last like two weeks and then they will stop so there's nothing you can really do to them more than just making a child more comfortable. It's just the same way children have cover and cutter and all that. We tell you don't do anything, just watch it. It's the same way. It can also go into the chest and make them to have difficulty with breathing. So when you go to the hospital, I always like to do this kind of um, uh, um, parent uh, empowerment, if you call it. Anytime you go to the hospital with your baby, always ask before you leave. What is wrong with my baby? What is the diagnosis? You have a right to know. So don't just go to hospice. People do that. It's amazing how often I get questions like that. And um, not only with children, even with adults. People go to the hospital, they are using drugs, they are doing this, they are doing that. But they have no clue whatsoever what the doctor is treating their child for. I mean, that is the that is very dangerous. Okay. One the minimum a doctor owes you when you go to the hospital is to tell you what they are thinking. They may not always be 100 percent certain, but they will always have what we call a walking diagnosis. The doctor always have something they are thinking about that this is what I'm thinking is wrong with this child. And they may either confirm it by doing tests and all that, or you know, they may want to just what we call trial of treatment they may just want to treat the child based on what they are thinking and see whether it works and then they will now know so initially if when they are thinking of one thing they're also thinking of two other possible things that if it's not this one it is that one that is how medicine is we are not always 100 percent certain we're not a god we're not oracles because people always expect that when you write one or two lines the doctor will automatically always know the diagnosis so it doesn't work like that and that is standard anywhere in the world so doctors are always going by what you tell us and thinking of what are the most likely things that will cause this kind of situation sometimes it could be more than two or three things we call them differential diagnosis and then we can do tests to narrow it down further or sometimes we just treat the child based on what we think is the number one most likely so for example what i told you now of bronchiolitis Based on what you've written, that is what I'm thinking is the most likely thing that is going on with your baby, that your baby most likely have bronchitis, And that is why your doctor is nebulizing your baby. And it is something that is going to go by yourself, hopefully within two weeks. So, But I expect that you should have that information as well. I expect that your doctor should have told you. But please always ask if they don't tell you that. And so that you know what the doctor is doing. And the reason why it's also important is that if the child is not better, then you know that you can go back to your doctor because sometimes your child is not better than somebody. The, the doctor is uh, not good or doesn't know what they are doing. He just knows that maybe we are wrong with the initial diagnosis and we need to consider because now that we've treated with this one and the child is not better, then maybe it's not the first one we're thinking. Maybe it's the second one on our list of differential that we need to address. Because it's not everything that you're going to confirm with blood tests. Some things don't show on blood tests, especially viral infections. So that is why you can now go back to your doctors for follow-up and then you can think about it. And that's why it's important to go for follow-up. Don't just jump to another doctor because then that other doctor is also going to start all over again and then it's going to be frustrating for you as a mom. So always go back to your doctor if your child is not better. Actually, ideally, most doctors will also tell you when to come back. Like, treat this treatment for so, so number of days. If your child is not better in 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, please come back. That is also another thing doctors should be telling you. <laughs> and another thing they should, you should be asking is, this drug that you say I should give my baby, what are the side effects that I should watch out for? And what should I do if I notice this side effect? So some side effects, we just tell you, just don't worry, it's a my thing, it's a gun. So some side effects, we want you to stop the drugs, we want you to come back to the hospital straight away. So it's important that anytime you go to the hospital, you ask your doctor those three questions. What are you treating my child for? These drugs you are giving me, 
what am I supposed to watch out for? What is it supposed to do? What are the side effects? Three, when should I come back if the child is not better? You must always ask. If that's the last thing you do before you leave your doctor's consultation room, you must ask. And a very good doctor will always answer those questions because I did it. The doctor should have answered those questions even before you ask. But if sometimes, you know, they're busy, distracted, when you ask, they will remember and then they can tell you that. So uh, I hope I've addressed your issue or lack being room. I just use this as a teaching point as well. So that's that's thank you for asking <laughs> all right somebody say good evening i want to leave my babies on age one year and five years use immune booster like well baby i don't really recommend any drugs or those so-called immune boosters i think the pharmaceutical con uh, companies are just out to make their own money all right so what is the immune what boosts the child's immunity is food let your child eat good quality food fruits and veggies so that they will have their vitamins let the children take the immunization pay attention to hygiene those are the things you need to do there's no special immune booster formula anywhere all those things they are selling to you are just vitamins and micronutrients that they mix together you don't need to buy them you need to buy good quality food and your children will get all those things in the food so we pediatrician generally we are not uh, we're not really a great fan of all these supplements drugs there and there children don't need no drugs children just need to eat well the only thing we want to take is immunizations and all that that's all there's no reason for you to be loading children because each of those drugs they have to put it inside uh, uh pro another kind of products to preserve them to do that. So there are lots of other chemicals your child is taking that your child doesn't even need. So that, that, those are the challenges. So it is better to eat your vitamin C, eat your apple, eat your oranges or whatever. It's better to eat your vitamin C than to take a tablet of vitamin C. Because when you take a tablet of vitamin C, you are not just taking vitamin C. You are taking all those additives, all those things that they use to preserve the vitamin C so that they can sell it to you in the bottle. So that is the most important thing people don't realize. So there are a lot of these things that are necessary going to the body system of the children. So let your children eat the vitamins rather than buy it in the shop. All right. I don't think I still have any questions on Instagram. Let me not forget them. All right. Let's go on to Facebook. Oluwato Sinye, Miss. I'd like to ask some of someone. Okay. I'm not very comfortable answering questions on behalf of people. Um, but there are a lot of ethical issues on that because, um, number one, you're not supposed to be uh, focusing to other people's health issues. I know most, most of we meant well. I know you meant well, but it is health issues are confidential issues. So we don't want to discuss my health issues with somebody else, even though it's my friend, it's not allowed. So for us as pediatrician, we only discuss children's health issues with their parents. So, so for me, I won't be able to answer your questions if it is very specific, but if it's just a teaching point, then that I will answer that. So, but just generally, because people do that a lot. And I know we meant well in Nigeria, especially in Africa, everybody's into everybody's business. But as doctors, we also hold our patient, what we call duty of confidentiality. So we cannot discuss somebody's health issues with you. And really, most time for me on ATP, I think it's just useless because me telling you doesn't mean that your the parents are going to follow it. So it's better the parents hear it directly from the doctor themselves. But this one is just for your own learning, not necessarily for their child. The parents have to ask for their, their own children's health issues. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. All right. So somebody was asthma. What kind of food she can she give to her baby? She can give her baby the normal food. Every other person gives their children, except what the child is allergic to. There's no special food for a child, somebody who has asthma. All right. So there's nothing like that. So when and when you come to health issues, please stop listening to people say this. People, people say a lot of nonsense. All right. And it's always amazing to me how much we all listen to people telling us things that are nonsense. And we don't even challenge them like. On what authority do you have to tell me that? <laughs> okay, many of the people that are advising us don't even have that authority. And but yeah, people always do that. And and I always tell my parents all the time, if I am now as a doctor, I'm giving you advice on your car. 
like okay go and remove the this particular part of your car and put something else there go and put salt or sugar in your in your car engine will you listen to me you won't because i said that Tokwem is a pediatrician she's not a mechanic so she's not an engineer she's not a, a automotive, automotive engineer so she has no authority to advise me about my car the same thing i can't advise you about your car i can't advise you about your your clothes like oh this is the style you should so i can't because that's not my field but it's amazing to me how much we listen to people advising us on health issues of our children and we just take it without even challenging them like on what authority do you have to tell me to do this to do that to you some people say go and use this drug go and use that drug People even buy drugs as souvenirs from when they travel to give to people. I'm like, seriously? So we really need to start letting people start taking the heads of our children. And for example, if I tell you to put sugar in your car and you go and do it and your engine knock, you will go and buy another car. You can even replace your car. But something like the health of your children, your, ch your child is more important than your car because you can't replace your child. So why will you not just listen to just anybody? And it's so common that people just people just tell you free advice. Go and do this about your health or the health of your children. And we just take it without even thinking or challenging them. I just want to tell you for free that you should stop doing that. If you want to take advice on health issues, you have to ask the professional. Your health, the health of your children is more valuable than your car. So I've just used the analogy to tell us, to make us realize how dangerous it is when people just tell you something and you just take it and people do it a lot and they will always tell you for free people just if you're on atp you can imagine if you're on atp when people when people post questions when we are trying to answer them you will just see somebody come from the blue go and use this go and use that on a platform where a pediatrician is trying to answer questions somebody who is not even anything related to health is coming to recommend drugs and telling people go and use this drug on an S platform with pediatricians with doctors. Of course, usually you know I, I I block those people straight away because they are very dangerous people. Some of those people they meant well for you, but they are very dangerous people. You should avoid people like that. If you are the type of people that tell people things and they start telling you go and use this drug, go and use that thing, avoid those people. They are very dangerous people because when they tell you to do the wrong thing, when it goes wrong, they will just hands up. They, they you can't sue them to court because you are the one taking decision so it's not their fault you have a right to listen but i want to tell you when it comes to that issue please stop listening to people i'm always tired of telling people to stop doing that because i think i just have to keep doing this stop listening to people ask your nurse ask your health professionals ask your doctors ask ask the pediatricians ask Go to you, uh, uh, UNICEF page, WHO page, hospital page. That's where you should be getting information from. Actually, in this internet age, we all have information. But please get information from the right source. Not some people say. Some people say don't do this. Some people say that. Why are they on? What authority do they have to even tell you to do that? So there's nothing like some people say this. They have no authority. If you say my doctor says, uh -huh, I'm going to listen to you. Or my nurse said, uh -huh. but that's saying some people say, why are those people? Somebody who is a teacher or somebody who is a mechanic or somebody who is a tailor telling you what to do about health issues, they have no absolutely no right to tell you that. So there's nothing like somebody who has asthma cannot take milk. Everybody can eat whatever they like as long as they are not allergic to it. So please don't listen to people. This mother should register a baby in asthma clinic. We have asthma clinic in general hospitals, in teaching hospitals for children so and you need to be going there so when you go there and ask my nurse somebody who is trained that's the only job the person does will come and tell you everything you need to know about asthma how to use your pump what to do what not to those are the people you should be listening to not somebody else from anywhere all right so i'm very passionate about that topic so i've gone overboard on it all right i think i have a question on instagram let me just quickly take that before instagram people will abandon me now <laughs> all right um one minute uh <laughs> miss 359 say good evening my, my four-year-old daughter complains recently about things being loud so what's the question are the things really loud or not that's the first thing i want to know so are the things really loud or not so if they are really loud then reduce the volume some of us 
the loudness of noise around the environment is noise pollution is too much so just check that but if you think there's something that's going on you may want to go and check a hearing first and all that but usually i will expect the opposite like if somebody has a hearing problem then they don't hear things not that they will complain that things is too loud but there are other hearing problems as well so you may want to check that or check the with the ENT doctors but first we'll make sure whether what she's actually saying is correct so if it's really loud then you should we should avoid loud uh noisy environment so i think that's i i, I hope i answer your question if that's not the question maybe you may want to uh we want to report the question. I, I thought I saw two questions. I can't see the second one. All right, maybe it's my face, my eyes. All right, so please, you post a question and I'm not answer it on Instagram. Please repost it. Okay, I think it's only one. All right, let's go. On. Facebook is said, maybe it's six months old. I introduced them two after EBF. Okay. Let's start by saying that when your baby is six months, Nantu is not complementary feeding. You don't even need to introduce Nantu at all. All right? We need to understand complementary feeding. All right? I get people with all this kind of question because it shows lack, absolute lack of understanding of complementary feeding. When your baby is six months old, you should keep breastfeeding. Breast milk is still the milk your baby needs. Your baby does not need any formula. Your baby needs other food, solids, not formula. Complementary feeding is not formula feeding, all right? You don't even ever need to use any formula when you start complementary feeding because as long as you're breastfeeding, that is a make your baby needs. So you don't need to start going from Nantu to SMA Gold. You are just giving these people free adverts on my program. So I want to see if you're in our Facebook group, good. So please go to guide section. Go, I always encourage us to do this. We need to encourage you more. Please, before you start complementary feeding, you must go to our guide section go to the guide to watch those videos read the article there understand what complementary feeding is then you will not have any problem because all this issue about nansu and sma gold they don't even need to arise at all because maybe does not need any of them for complementary feeding what we need for complementary feeding is solid so you can start with your pap you can start with your mashed potato or what are the food you eat? Even your semo, your amala, all those things that you eat. Adding it to breast milk to a child with the breastfeeding is what we know as complementary feeding. It's not giving formula at all. And I think I've tried to, I think I've done a presentation on all these myths. Uh, maybe I need to do the one on complementary feeding and address it again. Maybe it's been a while. So that is what you really need to do. So You've not even said complementary feeding because all I'm seeing here is nan two SMA good. I'm not seeing anything complementary in this child's uh, food. What you are doing is supplementary or replacing breast milk with formula, and that is not yet complementary feeding. So you are lucky you're with just six months old, so you've not lost so much time. Please go to the guide section, guide two, watch those videos, read it. If you go to my uh, podcast as well i've done i think complimentary reading is, in, is one of the most overflogged topic on atp so you can't miss it we have a lot of videos we have a lot of uh, flyers explaining complimentary feeding how to go about it the principles behind complimentary feeding all right so you need to understand that so complimentary feeding means you are adding solid food semi-solid food to breastfeeding that is the meaning of complementary feeding so your baby should be on breast milk and you are not having other food you don't even need to have formula some of you give formula because maybe you are not around there's no milk and all that you know some of you immediately do exclusive for six months you want to run away from breastfeeding no breastfeeding does not end at six months breastfeeding continues for as long as you want, even up to two years, we is only that breast milk is no longer enough at six months. So we need to add other food, other food from your kitchen, not anything you are not buying another milk, cow milk, which is what you bought from the store to give to the baby. You don't have to do that. So, and if your baby is reacting to all this milk, just throw them away. Give your baby breast milk. Your baby does not need to take any of those other milk anyway. Because your baby is taking breast milk. So your baby just needs 
all the other food, the pap, the yam, the rice, and all that. And the way you give it to them, the quantity you give, everything we've already covered is in that guy section. Please watch those videos. They are not very complex videos, five to ten minutes long. And they use local people, local food. So that to make it so simple, it is the easiest thing in the world. So your baby is doing the right thing by not taking formula because if you can sit a breast milk, you just need to give the right food. So if you are not sure how to get to the guy session, just ask on our group. One of our moderators will screenshot to you how to get to there. That's all you need to do. All right. Next question. Empress. I might be a five month screams a lot. I did a scream screaming. She calls another. You know, it's not cause for alarm. Most of what you call screaming, just baby playing and being noisy. I think I prefer baby who is noisy than baby who is not saying anything at all. So it's nothing to worry about. Empress. Just what you need to do is also play with the baby. When baby make those noises, you also make the noises back to the baby. So you are teaching the baby what we call reciprocal kind of conversation. And that is how children learn how to talk. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Naomi, Lossa, can I be given to a baby after one bottle? What bottle? After one bottle is finished, you mean the bottle of Happy Deck? If you want to give your children more vitamin supplements and all that, it's okay if you want to, but it's not necessary. Like I said, all your baby needs is breast milk for the first six months. After six months, you keep giving breast milk and you give all the food, the same food you eat in your whole house. You don't even need to buy anything from the store and, and, and all that. By the time baby is one year, two years, you should be eating exactly from the family's pots, from the household pots. All right, Empress says, e cups normal in babies. Yes, baby can have e cups, and you don't need to do anything, it will go by itself. It's natural. All right, Empress, I guess you're a first time mom. Okay, first time mom is um, go check over what test can I run for my tumor? Oh, no, you don't need to worry because you're already seeing a neurologist, the neurologists know what to do. So, if you're, if you're already seeing a specialist, there's no it is not your responsibility to be telling your doctors what test to do. A lot of parents ask us that that is wrong. You are not the one to tell doctor do this test for my baby. No, it is the job of the doctor to decide what test to do for your baby. And you've already seen a specialist, so if they have whatever they've done for you, it's okay. So, there's no reason for you to do that. Uh, recent text acts is blessing for HIV. Like, uh, what do you mean by recent text acts is blessing for HIV? You know, HIV is a vaccine, so it's not a test. Uh, maybe I'm not guessing what you mean. Da, da, da. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, exactly. So, if they've done all this, says just have this conversation with them. You know, again, it's important to have a conversation with your specialist. It's not just for them to be running all this. They need to explain to you each of these tests. This is why we're doing the brain scan. This is why we're doing the this test too. This is what we're looking for. And if it's not then, then we are happy and all that. You know? So you should have that conversation with them. You don't need to ask all these tests. So just have that conversation when they should go for checkup with your baby. So you don't need to worry. So I say, believe me, my pretend baby is not six months. And da, 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 but he has not rolled. Yeah, it can go, it can only go to his side, side or left or right. That is, I think that is rolling in my own dictionary. I completely his doctor, but she says it's normal. Okay, good. It can sit unsupported now without leaning on anything. That's good. But one day I put him on his tummy after a while of struggling, he rolled to the front. Okay, mommy, just relax. Just relax, relax, relax. You are too worry you are so worried about it. you are monitoring everything just relax okay the baby will do things when the baby is ready to do things okay so some babies do things a little bit faster some babies do it a little bit slower if your baby is already sitting at six months i am not worried i am not worried about anything at all so just leave the baby alone to do what the baby wants to do and that's it so i can't i don't say anything wrong with your baby and i think that's what your doctor is trying to tell you as well just Relax, relax, relax. I think just need that reassurance. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the, the doctor told me she has sick. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. You are the one that asked question about your baby being Yes. All right. And da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. My, how can I? How can you help your baby? Just keep doing what your doctor asks you to do. All right. There's nothing else to do. You can always go back to your doctors for follow up if you are not yet happy. If you are not satisfied, if you think your baby is not better. 
just go back to your doctor for follow up and they will uh tell you what next to do but like i told you some things run the course no matter we can speed up some things so if a child has a viral infection it's going to take two weeks there's no drug that's going to make it take take four days and i know parents you know you always have so much faith and so much hope in doctors you want us to fix things you want us to fix it in 24 hours if possible in one hour mm. and i always tell you some of those things they happen in one day they didn't happen in two days as well and we are not god honestly we are not we are we are not that powerful all right so we only support sometimes we just support the body to do the work you know we just support the body it's sometimes the body that heals itself so for example in those viral infection your doctor is only trying to make your bit breathe easier. There's nothing the doctor is doing. There's no magic there. We have to wait for that infection to clear by itself. But we can support the body. Maybe there's fever somewhere. We can give paracetamol if the breathing is. So that nebulization is to soften the mucus that your doctor told you so that it's easier for the body to get rid of it and all that. Those are what we call supportive treatment or symptomatic treatment. It's not a cure and it's not going to, <laughs> we still have to wait for the normal 14 days for the, the old thing to clear by itself. So just be a little bit um, patient and you will, you will get there. So, but like I said, if you are not happy or you're worried, you can always go back to your doctors for follow-up. All right. Naomi Luster. Recently, I had an accident with my baby hole. Sorry about that. He's four months old. Although he didn't have like anything happen, fell from a bike. Oh no! Please don't carry babies on bikes. Uh, no, please don't. I always tell mothers not to do that. I know it's faster for you people and all that, but it's not safe. It's not safe. Don't ever take babies on bikes. Don't. Don't. That's some. Um, you know. Let me not talk too much let me not preach too much today but there are some things that we we can just avoid i know it's not easy economy and other but please i'd rather you walk or take a bike a, a cab or wait for somebody to take you rather than go on a bike with a baby with an infant you say no no take a bus take a cab walk but don't go on the bike not even with all these and uh, no 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 never don't do that you know so please I hope you've taken the baby to the hospital, share. Even though the baby may look like nothing has happened, that's a major uh, accident. So, Naomi, take your baby to the hospital. I'm not saying anything is wrong with your baby, but I will be, I will sleep better at night knowing that the doctor has looked at that baby and the doctor said there's some problem because something, maybe a four month old baby cannot talk. If it is you now, you can tell us this is where it's paining me, this is where it's this thing. A four month old baby cannot tell us that, so we have to examine that baby, check press, check for any bone, any fracture, anything. That's the only way we know. So I will, I'll be more comfortable if you take that baby to see a doctor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a pediatrician. Any doctor, let them just you know test the baby, examine the baby, and tell you that okay, we are not worried, and you know so then eh, all of us can sleep better at night. So. But please don't, don't. Ah, Hugo Chuku, you already seen a neurologist. I, I'm not really sure you need to see me. I think you already seen a neurologist. And I think I know the person you are seeing if you are going to last us. So don't worry, just continue with the neurologist you're seeing. I've already told you, I'm sure your doctors have investigated. Just relax. You can go back to them and have a conversation and all that. And for what you told me, I, I don't really think there's much but just have that conversation with the person you're already saying that's that's my advice really all right you can send us a whatsapp message if you want private consultation but i really don't think in your own case specifically i'm not really sure there's really need for you to do anything again okay now i'm just answering your question now yeah, so just see your doctor, but to avoid future complications, don't put that baby on the bike again. Don't ever put a baby on a bike with you. I see mothers doing this a lot. It's wrong, it's dangerous, it is avoidable catastrophe. Honestly, it is. I'm happy your baby is fine, but 
sometimes some people are not so lucky and there's really no reason why we should be putting maybe some bike honestly there's absolutely no reason so you can either keep the baby at home and go on your own and come back or go with a bus or go with a cab just do whatever whatever can be safe for the baby but not on the bike what causes the baby to look big but lightweighted what is the weight of the baby then I will take that from there. We don't rely on look, we rely on the weights of the baby. So you tell me the age of the baby, you tell me the weight of the baby, then I will decide whether it's light or not. So that's my own approach to that. I think we said, my baby woke up two days ago, high sun, most couldn't open, clinic discharge. Okay, so this child has an eye infection. You need to take the child to the hospital. The child is having a clinic discharge. The child can't open the eyes. That is infection, most likely bacterial infection. So what you can do is that you can put face to well in water and use it to gently clean off the discharge and all that. And then you need to take baby to see a, a doctor because the child will definitely need some kind of antibiotic side drop. That's what you need to do. Uh, somebody said, da, 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 da. who is this? I did tell you, Miss Ade. Please don't come and do this on our platform. I'm going to delete your comments. If you do it again, I'm going to block you. No begging on our platform. Okay, I've answered that. Uh, is it too late to start complimentary feeding at 10 months? Ah, it's, it's, what, have, so what have we been doing before? Okay, so it's not too late. So start saying, I beg. You're already putting that baby at risk of what we call malnutrition, eh? Because there's no way your baby should be does be on formula only for 10 months or 10 months no 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 problem you can please do this. start the writing today it's not too late but please go and look look at our uh guide session first and that will be you know, it will be helpful oh uh, sorry i'm happy to hear that so for those one of the things we do on our group is to uh kind of help parents understand all these basic things and and I'm, I'm clear that there's no other, there's any topic with no address on ATP. We've been doing this for, we're going to be eight years in July, next, July 20th, next month. So we've been doing this for eight years now. So we've addressed almost any issues. Like for those of you who are first time mothers, if you want to get the FCM products, we have a lot of products for first time mothers to help you to know, to navigate motherhood without much stress. So you can get in touch with us and we'll try and send you the materials at a very cheap price, token price. Um, and But for, if you don't want to buy our products, fine, just go to our website. Just read, read, read. By the time you read all our topics, you'll know everything. <laughs> or you can go to my podcast, listen to each of them, the one that is relevant to your everything. You will know everything about so, most most of the time children are very straightforward simple easy uh we are we pediatricians are lucky in the sense that most of the time we have a lot of work to do even when our children are well we don't need children to be sick for us to do any work okay we need to make sure they are eating well we need to make sure we're protecting them against infections and all that i did a a presentation one time uh, for first time mothers on three things that your baby needs. Babies just need three things from you, really. They just need you to feed them, okay? You, you, you need to feed them and then you need to make sure you protect them, you know, from infections, from germs, from abuses and all that. And then you need to nurture them. That's all. That's all children need from you. They don't need anything else. If you do those three things, your children will be fine. So uh, maybe I will do that presentation one of these days on another platform like this. All right. So children are very straightforward. And so that's why we want you to know all these things so that there's no reason why our children should be sick. There's no reason why they should be dying. Of course, we know there are some serious illness, cancers, and all that that like, kill children on which we still don't have any much hope, uh, treatment for but basic things like malaria diarrhea measles they should not be killing our children they should not even be happening at all because we have vaccines we have all the things we need to do unfortunately 90 percent of our children are dying from those things diarrhea pneumonia all these things that are preventable that are treatable 75 percent of the time that is what is killing our children so we really need this is the old that's all we do on ATP to make sure 
we give parents this information, health information, education, empower you to take care of your children so that they don't have to be sick at all and we don't have to lose them. All right. Last question is seven o'clock. Um, oh, this mother with pretend baby. I expect you to sit unsupported by seven to eight months. So even though you are telling your baby is sitting unsupported, I already know what you meant, but I'm not worried because your baby is just six months old. The kind of sitting that how you want the baby to get into the sitting position by herself with the back straight and all that is a seven to eight months old skill. So I'm not worried about your baby. So just relax. Like I told you, you don't need to be too um worried a bit or anxious i'm trying to look for the right word just give children time okay some children are just like everybody is not done good or the same thing with children some children will do things faster and they will get there some i guess you are comparing your child with maybe other children who are six months old or maybe your older children every child is different just as long as the child is still doing things within the normal range with the doctors, we are not worried. It is only when your child is like, for example, your child is six months old now. If your child doesn't have neck control, hand, that's when I will worry. So for me, that is when I will be worried that if six months old doesn't have neck control, then I'm I'm worried. But if six months old is already sitting, who is making some whether it's partial role or full role, I am not worried. All right. So just let the baby be and relax, relax, so that your breast milk will keep flowing. Otherwise, all this worry and anxiety will dry your makeup on so just relax at least you heard from me now relax okay it's okay it's natural for mothers to worry it's part of your job description and it's also part of my job description as a pediatrician so that you relax don't worry as well so that's fine all right is it too late to give your baby mr vaccine well, i think you should start first by telling me the age of your baby okay she's two years three months old she's okay you there's never too late to take vaccines Maybe one or two vaccines that we don't like rotavirus vaccine. And the reason why it is too late for rotavirus is because um, we rotavirus infection is an infection that tends to occur between six to eleven months old. So it's a it's a one year problem. So there's really no point giving rotavirus vaccine after one year. The child doesn't need it anymore. But most of the other vaccines, we will always give them as long as your child has not taken them. So if your child has mixed vaccine, thank you for asking that question because you reminded me to, to kind of give this health information as well. Please just go for them. So it's never too late to take vaccine. Except vaccines against conditions that are time-bound, you know, like rotavirus. That's about the only one. I can't remember which other one again. So then like, like maybe things like polio. If you have take, if you miss one dose, I'm giving you other doses then. That's fine. Or hepatitis B, if you miss the one that passed, but we'll still give you at six weeks, at 10 weeks, at 14 weeks, so we won't bother you again. So that's fine. But otherwise, most of the other vaccines, if you miss them, you can always go take them. Don't say it's too late. It's never too late. All right. So uh, we usually in Nigeria, we don't give MMR vaccine. We give only the measles vaccine. Okay. But if you want to give the MMR so that the M, in the MMR is measles, the second hem is mumps, and the third hem is rubella. So the mumps and rubella, we don't think they are that important, so we don't give MMR. But there's nothing wrong with you taking them if you want to take them. It's okay. And you can always go for them, just two doses. Uh, is your six-month-old underweight? What was the best weight? Your six-month-old should have doubled the best weight by now, so it should be closer to eight kilos. But then 7.1 is also not too bad, so I'm not worried. So please start the complimentary feeding for your six months old now, and the baby will be fine. Your baby was very big at the beginning, so maybe your baby lost some weight at the beginning, but it's not so bad. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not like worried, worried, but please start complimentary feeding. If you don't know how to go about complimentary feeding, please go through our guide section, guide two, and watch all the videos there, and you'll be fine. Okay, one question on Instagram. 18 months old, she wakes up to suck at night. That is perfectly normal. All right. Is there a way I can help her sleep all through the night without sucking? Then you have to win her. That's the only way. <laughs> if you don't want her to suck, then you have to win her completely off the breast. But as long as she's still breastfeeding, she will keep on waking to breastfeed. And to be honest, for us as pediatricians, 
that's perfectly normal. We want you to breastfeed as long as two years. So I have no problem whatsoever with an 18 month old sucking at night. I have no, absolutely no problem at all. It's perfectly normal. So keep on breastfeeding the baby up to two years. You are following the, the baby is following, the baby is reading the pediatrician textbook and is following WHO guidelines. So that's fine. But I understand that you want to sleep at night. So if you want to sleep but you don't want to keep breastfeeding at night, then you have to win your baby completely off the breast. So that's the only solution. But actually, it's good for you to keep sucking at night. All right. Um, oh, I need to go now. Time is up. Naomi is asking whether we need to take ambiclos. No, no child needs to take any antibiotics ever. Please do not give antibiotics to children if a doctor has not written it. And a doctor will write it only if your child has infection. So antibiotics are not like uh, vitamins that you just go and buy over the counter and give to children. No, a lot of mothers do that. A lot of mothers also give, like one mom who wrote that she was giving flagell and she wanted to give flagell, but she ended up giving her own antihypertensive drugs to the child. Now, like seriously, the child doesn't even need any drug in the first instance. If you have not needed to give any drug, you wouldn't have even made any mistake. So please don't give children antibiotics like you, anything, even if they have diarrhea, don't give. Give ORS, ORS saying, see a doctor. Only a doctor should prescribe antibiotics. Antibiotics are not over-the-counter drugs. They are not drugs to give, like, uh, vitamins or paracetamol. They are not over-the-counter drugs. They are drugs that are prescription only. Unfortunately, our, in Nigeria especially, our health system is so bastardize and anybody can just walk into any pharmacy and buy any drug in other countries you can't and that is the ideal thing in people in, in places where people do the right thing you can't oh you don't bring a prescription nobody's going to give you any antibiotics so we need to get to that point as well in nigeria but why we're waiting to get to that point please stop doing the wrong thing all right so thank you so much yeah if you are late uh thank you for Fumilala, if you're educational thank you for coming if you are late feel free to like i said you can still post your questions on ask the pediatrician facebook group monday to saturdays and we answer them for those of my friends who are just joining and watching the broadcast after we have gone half life please don't drop your questions again you can post your question on our Facebook group. Instagram people, sorry, we, we don't do DM and all that. You have to come to Facebook to post your questions there. I know most of you do say you're not on Facebook, but for now, we don't have that technology to do Q&A on Instagram, except we're doing live because our Instagram uh, handler is not like a a doctor so she can't be answering your health issues and but on facebook because doctors can we can wait on approve and do it at the right so there's some kind of more control over what we can do questions can wait until the doctor is ready whereas instagram you can't do that so that's why we can do instagram dm issues but please go to our facebook group ask your questions there and we will answer them thank you so much all of you that are Thank you, me. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again on Thursday. I'll be doing a teaching on part two of the first aid care for babies. I'll do the second part. I think I'll talk more about conversion and all those first aid things. So please watch part one and then you can watch part two on Thursday. All right. Have a wonderful evening everyone i really appreciate you joining me if you're not here then i'll be talking to myself so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again same time next week by god's grace oh and on thursday as well <laughs> all right good night bye